So the next thing that we want to do is to be able to start to retrieve the data that comes from the URLs that we're passing into it and ultimately start to work through the XML or the HTML that's coming back. So we're going to use two libraries, one that's built in and one that you can get uh, from the internet freely available. So the first thing, let's go ahead and uh, just run this real quick. So in order to run this in its current form, we would just simply use Python from the sh command shell and then pass in our iTunes.py file. And as you can see here, we have a little bit of an issue this is a nice thing about Python is it's pretty good about telling you when you do things wrong and where you've done the wrong things. So as you can see here on line 34 for app in self apps, it even shows you the line text. Uh, it doesn't know what self is. And that's because at this point we're not in any sort of context. There's no self apps, but what there is, and I mistyped this before is there is a crawler apps. Remember we created this apps as a property inside of our app crawler class. So now that we've done that and we've saved it, we can go ahead and run that again. And it seems to run just fine. It doesn't do anything yet, but it seems to work. So now we want to go ahead and bring in our libraries that we want to use in order to get this whole thing to work. And what we're going to do to get this the whole thing to work is actually we're going to use a library that's free, that's for Python, called LXML. And what that is, is it's a nice library for processing XML and HTML. So this is going to save us some headache of going through the data that comes back from our requests that we're making out to the web. So the nice thing about this is if you're on your Mac, this is already going to be there for you. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to download it and install it. You may want to update it if you'd like. If you're using Windows, it will be a little bit different. You're going to have to go ahead and download it. But the nice thing is you can go ahead and get the source code from GitHub or so you can get the source and see how it works and implement your own version or do whatever you want. That's pretty cool. All right. So let's go ahead and start to import those things. So to import those, we're going to go to the top of our file. We're going to say from LXML, since that's the name of the library, and I want to import uh, it's called HTML. That's what's what that's what's going to be provided to us from this particular library, so we can start to extract data from the HTML that's coming back from a string. Now we also want to import something called requests. Now this is a built-in library that you can use in Python to issue. HTTP requests out to the web so I can issue gets and posts and all that sort of good stuff. This is going to encapsulate all of that for us so we don't have to worry about writing that all from scratch. So the first thing I think that we'll do is we're going to focus on getting the data out of the page. So once we've determined what page we want to go to, which in our case is that Candy Crush page, we want to extract data out of that. And how exactly do we do that? Well, interestingly enough, it's quite simple. So if I reopen my Candy Crush game here, remember this is kind of what we were looking at here. And once you go to one of these pages, if you find a piece of data that you want, so in this case, I want to get the title or the name of the app. So I'll go ahead and right click on that. And once again, in Chrome, I can select inspect element. Now, most other browsers will have something similar and it's going to take you down into this kind of Dom hierarchy tree to exactly where that piece is at. And then as you can see, it's right here. It's in an H1 tag. Now, the nice thing here, is that I can see that this is an H1, but it has a very specific attribute here called item prop name. So this is gonna help me when I actually start to try to extract this data out of this particular page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use that LXML library to use, in our case, what you, you could ultimately iterate through all of the lines in the HTML that comes back, but that's gonna be a little laborious. So what I want to do is I want to use LXML to use some XPath to actually go specifically to this line and get this piece of data out. So let's see how that will work. So I'm going to come into my get app from link function here and I'm going to start by issuing a request to get the data that I want. So I'm going to call this start page and I want to use my requests and I want to use the get function that's attached to it and I want to pass in the link. So this is going to issue a get request to the URL that I pass into it and it's going to get back a basically a string representation of what's going on on that particular page. And if you wanted to prove that you could simply do a print and you could say start page and you want to use the text property that's attached to it. So if I go ahead and save that and come over here and execute my code 
it of course isn't actually working yet because crawl is not doing anything with that so I could go ahead and just say self get app from link and we'll say we want to pass into this self dot starting URL so this is ultimately what we're going to get to eventually so now we've gotten an error it says request is not defined and that's because it is actually requests so we'll save that and we'll go ahead and run that and as you can see here we've just spit out all of that HTML that came back now if you wanted to parse through this line by line and look for stuff you can but oh, but what a nightmare and a long time that would take so that would be rather inefficient so what we want to do is we want to use that LXML library to start to pick it apart I want to ultimately take that information and kind of create a document tree out of that so that I can actually use some XPath to get where I want to go and that's what we're going to do we're going to create a tree and we're going to set that equal to and we're going to use HTML from the LXML library and we're going to say from string and we're going to pass into it that start page dot text so all of that text is what's going to get passed into tree now we can use this tree to actually execute XPath queries into that document and pull data out so the first thing we want to look for is name. So if you remember, once we went in there, we had the name kind of highlighted on our page. And as you can see here, it was in an H1 tag with an item prop attribute equal to name. And I wanted to pull that text out of there. So let's go ahead and see how we would do that. Now, I'm not going to go through the specifics of how to do a lot of XPath. I'm going to give you the absolute basics here. So what I want to do is I want to get everything from the root. And in order to do that, everything from the root of the tree that I've kind of parsed out here. So to do that, I'm, I give two slashes. So at this point now, I can say, all right, I want you to give me H1 tags. And I want you to give me the H1 tags that have an attribute named item prop that has or that is equal to a value of name. So that's going to give me all of the H1 tags that have an item prop attribute that has a value of name, and then ultimately I wanna say, you know what, give me the text from that. So once I've done that, actually this XPath function here is going to return to me a collection or a list of all the things that match this. So in order to actually get the one that I want, I'm fairly certain that there's only one in this instance. So I'm going to say, you know, give me the value that's at index of zero right now. And let's just go ahead and print out name just to see if this works. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we'll go ahead and run our queries. Ah, so you can see here we've pulled out Candy Crush Saga off the top of that page. Well, let's not stop there. Let's head back over to our page. Now we also want to grab this string here. So we're going to right click, inspect element. Oh, look at that. It's an H2. But now at this point, it's not as clear as or as simple as saying, give me an attribute that has a particular, or give me an element that has a particular attribute like the previous one did. We have to look a little bit deeper. So let's go ahead and do the same thing in XPath again, but let's see if we can maybe move up a line here and say, I want, give me the div that has a class of left and then give me an H2 within there. And let's see if that's going to get us where we want to go. So we'll come back in here again, and this is going to be the developer. So we'll say developer is equal to tree.xpath. And we'll say, all right, I want to give, give me a div that has an attribute named class that's equal to left. And then from within there, I want to then give me the H2 that is within there, and then from within that H2, give me the text. And once again, give me the first one in the hopes that that's gonna be the correct one. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now instead of printing name, we'll print developer. So let's save that. All right, so we got back by king.com limited. So we can go ahead and address that by, maybe we could strip that out later or something like that, but that's probably not a big deal. We could leave it in there. And then once again, we wanted the price. So let's come back over to here and we'll go ahead and to, down to the price area, which is right here. And we'll inspect that element. And we have, ah, very nice. We have a div with an item prop attribute of price and we want what's in there so we can handle that in a very similar way to how we've already done. So let's come back in here and this time we are going to get the price. That's going to be tree.xpath. And this is once again going to be a div. And this is going to have a class 
or an attribute, which is item prop, which is going to be equal to price. And once we've gotten that far, we can once again grab the text. And once again, we want the first one. So we'll save that and we'll go ahead and put the price in here. So let's save that. And we'll go ahead and run our code, and there we go, it's free. So now you've retrieved three pieces of information, the name, the developer, and the price, all using fairly simple XPath queries to dig through that information. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna grab those apps that we found down in there, down at the bottom here to say customers also bought. So let's go ahead and right click on one of these and inspect this element, and we're gonna see this is pretty far down here inside some lookup info inside a presentation and the first list item within the ul with a role of presentation this is going to give me the link so this is roughly where we're going to need to go to get this information but what we're going to have to notice about this is that a lot of times if you just start looking for list items there's probably going to be a lot on here and same with the uls there's probably going to be a bunch of them in different places around here so let's kind of come up and take a look a little bit and i see we're in the center stack so this seems to be where we're looking here to find these particular links so the center stack seems to be this whole area in the middle here so we want to look in the center stack and we want to dig down a little bit further and grab some information that's down here in lockup info and in these list items and in particular the first one so let's go ahead and come back in here and we will go ahead and grab the links and that's going to be equal to and we're going to use this xpath function again and this time i'm actually going to uh, paste some xpath in here just so you can save the headache of actually watching me type this so we're going to grab that div that has an attribute of class with a value of center stack and then we're going to use the double slashes again meaning i want to look at all the descendants of this particular div and that's what the star is going to mean. This is the wild card that says, give me everything that's within there. And from all of that data, I want to grab an, uh, a link. I want to grab an A tag that has a class of name. So if so I come back in here, you're going to see that this particular anchor tag has a class equal to name. And if I look within here, there's a little bit more information about Cookie Jam here, but I don't necessarily want this particular title what I want is just this link. I want the value of this href attribute. So if I come back in here, you'll see I'm just saying, all right, get me that far to that name and then give me the value at that href. And that's gonna give me a list. So at this point, if I were to do for link in links, and then I could go ahead and just pop this in a little bit and print out the link like that. We'll go ahead and save and we'll run this. So now you see I've gotten three links. I've got the link to Cookie Jam, this 100 picks quiz, and also Fruit Ninja Free. And those were the ones that were on that page. So now you've created this piece of information or you've extracted all the information you want out of that particular page. So instead of doing this printing, let's go ahead and create an app instance, which is going to be an instance of an app. And then we're gonna pass in the name, the developer, the price, and the links. So now that we've done that, we've seen how we can now grab all that data out and create a new instance. And at this point, why don't we also say self.apps and we're going to append this particular instance of that app to our apps list. So now that we've done that, theoretically speaking, of course, if I were to clear this out and go ahead and run, Ah, now you see I have a name of Candy Crush Saga. Developer is by Kings or by King.com Limited, and the price is free. Now, now I'm not printing out the links because technically speaking, you're probably not going to want to visualize those, but you're going to want to follow them. And that's exactly what we're going to start to work on in the next lesson.